Maryland will have a scrimmage. What am I looking for? You are Locked On Turks, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. So Maryland has an open scrimmage next week, not this week, Saturday, not tomorrow as in Saturday, but next week, Saturday, that they just announced. So next weekend, it's an open scrimmage at Frank Ballo School in the D.C. area. So this is interesting. This is very interesting. Open scrimmage, what does that mean? Anyone can come. And this is a little bit different because this is a little bit different than the past practice they had combined with Morgan State and that kind of community thing. This is also a community thing, Coach Loxley says. It's to bring recognition and kind of like that feeling to the DMV area and just show that like that the Maryland football program is really a great representation of just being good guys and being there for the community and putting on a practice at a school instead of doing it at Maryland, putting it somewhere in the city to show off that kind of community type of feel, which I always think is a really cool thing that we do. And I agree. I love Coach Loxley giving back. He says it's for the community and it's important to showcase that. And I really love that Coach Lox is able to do that because you guys can't forget sometimes this is more than a game. I know we get caught up in the games and the players and all that type of stuff, transfer portal, coaching changes and all that stuff. But sometimes you got to realize that it's about more than that. Sometimes it's just about a community type of thing and bring community and people coming together to watch sports. So it's cool that Maryland has been really trying to do work in the community. But so back to the actual more football dynamic of it. So this football scrimmage is an open scrimmage. And so that means that there's going to be media there. There's going to be fans there. So there's going to be plenty of tells, plenty of reports of what is going on with this Maryland football scrimmage. And I cannot wait to talk about it. It is next week, next weekend, not this weekend, but the next weekend. So we still have a little bit to go, but I kind of wanted to give a my kind of, what am I looking at? What am I looking for? What players am I kind of eyeing overall for this? What situations, what position battles? A quick little rundown on the offensive side of the ball. I want to start with today, just a quick little rundown of what I'm looking at during this scrimmage for Maryland football. And of course, you guys already know where it starts at. On the offensive side of the ball, we're going to start with the most important position in all the sports, I think. The biggest position in all of sports, maybe the most popular position in all of sports, at least in America, in the quarterback position for Maryland football. Whenever you have a quarterback battle, that is going to be the thing that everyone's going to be looking at, that everyone's going to be looking for. If if there's like a media type of presence, which there definitely will be, they will all be watching the quarterbacks, like during warmups, during the game, during whatever they do, if they practice at all. I think it's just a scrimmage, but if they practice at all, everyone's going to be watching the quarterbacks and what how Coach Loxley handles that situation. And that's what I'm going to be looking for. I think that's the biggest storyline. I think that at this point is what people really care about. And the thing is, are we going to get a tell? I think that's a really important part of this game. I know that how they play is important and how they look is definitely really important, but you guys can't forget that these guys practice every single day almost. So it's like Coach Loxley sees these guys every day, and like this one scrimmage performance obviously is really important still, but it's not like – life or death like coach locks he's seen the play every day like he's a pretty good idea of where everyone's at you might not have an idea who's the starter is going to be but he's a pretty good idea where everyone's at and one scrimmage isn't going to just completely change that unless someone maybe goes absolutely crazy but you have to so my point basically saying that is is there some type of tell to say who's in the lead who's the number one quarterback right now is there some type of ranking and the tells could be like who goes out there first. I don't know exactly how they're doing the scrimmage. I don't know if it's just like first team offense versus first team defense and second team offense versus second team defense, or if they mix it all up, jumble all the teams up. I don't know exactly how they'll do it because of course there's still the spring game, which 
I'm not sure how they'll do it this year either, but it'll be it'll be quite intriguing to see is there any tell for the quarterback battle? Who goes out there first? Does Billy Edwards maybe get the first reps or who if it's two teams and it's like what two quarterbacks play first? Is it Cam? Is it MJ? That will be a huge part of the storyline. What tell will we get from that quarterback battle? Is there anyone in front clearly? Is there a small little thing that we see that is like, okay, he probably has a small lead. Any type of news about that quarterback story is important. And then obviously I'm also going to be looking at how they play, how they look, because I've heard that it's been up and down this offseason, which is kind of to be expected with having three guys that are all – I mean, MJ Morris has some experience, but he's new to the system. And then two guys that haven't really played much for Maryland football. But so you would kind of expect it to be up and down. But that's one thing I'm for sure going to be looking for. In the wide receiver room, yes, we have our starters. Yes, we have Caden Prather and Ty Felton, who are going to be really good players at the receiver position. Of course, he's really good last year. And a lot's going to depend on the quarterback battle. But for me personally, these, a lot of these scrimmages are less about the actual starters, and a lot of that is pretty – I mean, this year it's definitely not all set in stone for sure. Plenty of position battles to get into, and I think the receiver position battle is more about the depth, but I think depth is important for a lot of these battles. Who steps up? Who proves that they should get some time? Who should get that depth minutes? Because there's plenty of players in that wide receiver room that I think have a chance to kind of slide in to get a little bit of time. I think our wide receiver room is one of our strengths, but I think there's like, like you think about Caden Prather and Ty Felton and then probably like Octavian Smith. And, and then there's probably three, four other guys that all could push for maybe a little bit of time. Maybe Robert Smith is pushing for time. Ryan Manning was a freshman last year. I've heard he's done really good. Um, Shalik Knotts has stayed in. He's he's big and athletic and has a chance. Maybe some of the freshmen like Makai White could get in that conversation. He's also a large body. And so it's going to be interesting to see the depth in that wide receiver room. But I also look for the, the future. After next year, Caden Prather and Ty Felton are gone who is next up in that line of Maryland wide receivers? I think that's something else I'm looking for on the offensive side of the ball for the Turks. Is there depth in that wide receiver? Who kind of steps up? Who's another guy that can play in there? Is there a guy that is a clear third receiver? Is Octavian Smith really the three? That's something that's going to be important for this wide receiver room in terms of this year, but also just the future. You get a little small, just a little small taste of what might be coming. The running back room, like I said with the wide receiver room, it's more about the depth. Is there a third guy that might sneak in some carries overall? Could Deshaun Williams, talented freshman, get some? Could Colby McDonald, is he really the number two? How does that look? How does that that rushing attack look? Maybe Eli Mason gets some carry. It's an interesting type of thing with the running back room because I've been pushing for Roman Hemby to get a lot of carries and more carries, but – does Maryland still want to rotate guys, keep guys fresh? Like I said, freshman Williams, is he going to play at all? So the scrimmage is a good tell to see kind of a really basic outline of where the depth chart may lie at right now for this Maryland football team. The tight end room is actually might be the thing that I'm most prepared and most ready to watch because I've heard a lot of different things. I also know that there's it's an inexperienced group up there and it's like I want to know is Dylan Wade like that is he going to be a guy that's like this guy is like a really good tight end like this is a future of Maryland football in terms of receiving talent coming from the tight end and overall just an offensive threat is he going to be that type of guy does he flash as much as coach Loxley makes it seem like he's been flashing in practice and of course Preston Howard as well I think Preston Howard and Dylan Wade, it's they're they're one of the biggest question marks because there are guys, there are guys that I think have really high ceiling as a tight end room, but I honestly think they could have a low floor. Do they 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 show that higher ceiling or do they show that they're gonna make a lot of mistakes, drop balls, they're a little bit experienced, they're not exactly ready? I really believe that that group is really like high ceiling, but also low floor. I think that's kind of how I would best describe it as, but I mean, guys that are high ceiling, it's really it's a really up to you. Can you figure it out? Can you make it happen? And I have confidence in that group that they will, just based on what I've been hearing. But it's also an experience. We don't know. We they definitely can make some mistakes, which is totally fine. And 
in a spring practice, but I'm going to be looking at is Dylan Wade the truth? Is Preston Howard really going to be elite at tight end one? That's going to be a big part of what I'm going to be looking at. And then how does the O-line shape out? We had plenty of guys transfer out, and we had plenty of guys transfer in. How do they configure in the first group? Does Loxley have a five? Remember last year it was like, I don't know who my starting five is. Coach Loxley was like, it felt like the quarterback battle this year almost. Obviously, it's like not going to get as much excitement last year, but it was like we have nine or we have like 11 guys that can all play. And he had he was like, I don't know who the starting five is and blah, blah, blah. And so this year, is it more solidified? I feel like people aren't talking about it as much. Is it more solidified? And is it like we kind of understand and know who's going to be out there the first day or are we still figuring it out? I'm sure there's some guys that we are pretty confident about up there, but we replace a lot of guys that are trying to go to the NFL and two guys I think are going to get drafted in Gottlieb and um, Gottlieb and Delmar Glaze. And so you replace two tackles, you replace the, the entire line. It's like, how does that look? And then I'm also going to be looking for an unexpected playmaker, whether it's in the tight end room, maybe someone outside of Wade and Preston, whether it's in the wide receiver room, one of those depth guys I talked about it. Maybe it's one of the quarterbacks. They have an unexpected and elite type of performance, or maybe someone on the offensive line, even though that's kind of hard to like get the reports about, has a really good day. But I'm going to be looking for someone that might not be have been expected to make a huge play or make a couple really good plays, but maybe is showing that they should play more than we think we do. But that's just some of the stuff that I'm looking forward to next weekend scrimmage. I had to get a little bit ahead of this. I wanted to talk about it because I think there's plenty of stuff to talk about, and there's going to be plenty of stuff to talk about after the scrimmage. But I think those are some of the storylines that I'm looking at and just for the rest of the offseason as well. Maddie, Maryland basketball player, leaves and is entering the transfer portal. Is it a big loss? I will tell you about that after this ad from the Game Time app. Have you ever wanted to go to a game at the last minute like a Maryland Terrapins game, but finding tickets is hard? I have been there before. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's a place to find last-minute seats and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So Maddie Torre enters the transfer portal for Maryland basketball, but I don't think it's that big of a loss, and I think both sides benefit from Maddie entering the transfer portal. So he entered the transfer portal yesterday. He is going, he's a sophomore currently, but he's a rising junior. So next year he would have been a junior for Maryland basketball. And Maddie, I mean, it's just like he's never really figured it out. To be frank, to be honest, he never really figured it out for Maryland basketball. And that's just what happens with some guys. It just doesn't work out. You're hoping that they figure it out. But he never really figured it out. He never really had a role. He only played 12 games this year, was injured a tad bit, um, but also just didn't play in some games, like a healthy type of scratch type of guy in a lot of games. Only averaged 8.7 minutes a game. Never really played for us. And he's one of those guys that I think that we took in the portal um, a couple years ago, and it's like he's a guy that's like – Okay, he's a guy that you want in the portal maybe as a guy that is like a last slot you need to fill. And it's like he has a high ceiling as a player, but it's also a low floor as well. And maybe he can he doesn't figure it out. And I think that's kind of what you have in Maddie. He just didn't figure it out. He has all the attributes and the talent and the size and athleticism to to have been a really good player for Maryland basketball. He kind of is a freak a little bit. Maybe he's not as strong as you would like, but in terms of his size, athleticism, I mean, he's a guy that he has all the traits and attributes that a lot of people will kill for. He just never really figured it out how to put it together for Maryland basketball. Never really could get in the rotation really like 
really solidify himself. He did start a couple games this year when um, Julian Reese was out or we had an injury in the front court. But overall, a lot of games he didn't even play. But we also keep bringing guys in as well. I think that's another point to make in terms of both sides of this. It's like he's thinking, okay, Julian Reese might enter the portal Maybe I have a chance to maybe even start next year for Maryland basketball before he enters the portal, maybe. Maybe he thinks Julian Reese is going to go somewhere else. But it's like, when is he going to play? Julian Reese is coming back, and we have their queen five-star coming in. He's one of the best players in the country. I'm still going to be talking about a ton about what he did and his Montverde team going undefeated and him being the MVP of the McDonald's All-American game and – He's going to be a guy for Maryland basketball, and that's the guaranteed starting front court. And then we also bring back Jordan Rodmo, who started last year for Maryland, who looks like he's just prepared to play a role, wants to stay in College Park and finish up here in Maryland. And it's like he's going to be our fourth big. Maybe if we don't bring in anyone else, we still had two portal spots left before him, and one of those could have definitely been used on the big. And so I'm looking at it, and I'm like, he would have never really played for us because there just wasn't a spot from the play. And he's a guy that you probably, for him to develop, he probably needs to play. And it might not be at the Big Ten or like a Power Five type of level. I don't think it is. But it might be somewhere a little bit of a smaller school. I mean, maybe like a mid-major or something where he can go and start and play a ton of minutes and really use his length and athleticism to really propel his career a little bit because it's been quiet. And I think it, he deserves to go somewhere else where he's going to play because he's a really talented player. If he can just continue to work on the jump shot, continue to work on his shot blocking, because he has the length and athleticism to be an elite shot blocker, work on the offensive game. He just has a chance to be a really good defensive player. But if he continues to do that, then there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to play one day for Maryland for um, another program and even could have probably played for Maryland basketball, but it just wasn't really going to work with the guys that we were bringing in. But I think he really needs to play to develop. So I think both sides are better off going in opposite directions and just starting over almost for him. But he just didn't have the time that he needed. It's different than the NBA in college. Like, if you don't, you might get like a year to develop. And if you're not ready to go after that year, they give you to develop. It's like, you might never play. And that's kind of where I got with him. And it's like, it's not the NBA where you draft someone and he's just got straight tools and he's got plenty of work to do. And you can groom him for two to three years. And it's like, oh, by the third year, it's like, oh, he looked really good. And it's like, oh, fifth year. Oh, this guy's an all-star. Like, that's not what happens in college. You just don't have the time. And that's why I think that it hurt him the most. But now Maryland has three spots open in the portal, which can be really beneficial because we can add a couple of really good high-end players to replace Maddie, to replace Kaiser, to replace Lamothe, to replace Bachelor, and maybe even guys that are really impact players. These last three spots is going to really shape how next season looks. It looks really good next year. We could be a preseason top 25 team. But these last three spots are going to be like, are we going to be a, maybe a potential like national championship type of team? Or are we going to be a team that's like, okay, like we're pretty good. We we probably be top 25 hovering around the 20s. Or are we going to be like 13, 14, 15 in the country maybe? I think these last couple of spots can really determine that. But that's a conversation for another day. We'll see who we bring in. But last, we're going to talk a little, do a little Friday start bench but do like doing these on Fridays. We got a really cool one. And I will tell you about that after this ad of, from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships and also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not 
cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home a huge win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. So we're doing a star bench cut between three Maryland point guards, three of the better Maryland players ever, three probably my favorite three players in Maryland basketball recent history for sure. You guys can probably guess who they are. Number one we have is Mello Trimble, number two, Anthony Cowan, and number three, Jameer Young. I think I've used Jameer Young for a couple of these start bench cuts. Uh, I forget exactly, but when we did a couple of these other ones, I think I've used Jameer Young a couple of times. But who would I start? Who would I bench? Who will I cut? And this is about, we're talking about just overall Maryland career. And it's really hard to kind of pick between these three because they were all elite. They all did really good things. But it's hard to kind of, like, it's just hard to pick. And I'll get into the reason why. But I'm cutting Anthony Cowan. Obviously awesome for Maryland basketball. Deserves to be recognized as a Maryland basketball great, and one of the better Maryland guards really ever. I think you'd be in your top 10 Maryland guards ever probably if you did a list, maybe top 15. But I think he's definitely up there for one of the better Maryland guards. Um, and he's he really helped the Maryland program. But – I think that when I look at the numbers, I have to put Jameer Young and then Mel Trimble to what he did for the program. I think I think I have to put um, Jameer Young and Mel Trimble above him, and I must cut him because he didn't have as good of a freshman year as Mel Trimble, and then he didn't have as good of a senior year as Jameer Young. And so I was looking at it, and I was like, Hmm. The numbers look really sim- similar with Melo Trimble, to be honest. But it's like Melo Trimble had a better freshman year and started better right away. They were actually on the same team when Calvin was a freshman um, and Melo was in his third year. They were actually on the same team. But I have to cut Anthony Cowan. Obviously still a great. Obviously still lo- love his game. He was an explosive, quick athlete who improved the three-point shot over time. Uh, but I must cut Anthony Cowan. Bench. I'm benching Jameer Young. I have to bench Jameer Young. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to try and have too much recency bias with how he played this year. There's a case literally for all three of these guys. Let me know what you guys think. But I'm benching Jameer Young for the fact that Melo Trimble did it for longer. He did it for three years compared to Jameer Young's two years at Maryland. And I think that legacy kind of matters, like coming in as a freshman and doing it since your freshman year, even though Melo Melo left a year early, is different than doing it as a junior and as a senior. You know what I mean? Like, and I know I choose chose um I know I chose Jameer Young over Anthony Cowan because I just thought Jameer Young's senior season was so explosive averaging 20 points per game like Melo Trimble and Anthony Cowan have not come close to that number like their highest number is about 16 points per game like they don't come close to that that's how crazy Jameer Young was averaging almost 21 actually and so I'm looking at it though and I'm saying met or Melo Trimble he's kind of like he was Maryland basketball like he was just like what the program needed brought fans into the seat. And it was also during a time that we were a lot better because we just had a better team overall around Mel Trimble than what we did Jameer Young. If we ever got to see Jameer Young get with a really good team, if we put Jameer Young this season on what Maryland basketball was when Mel Trimble was around and even when Anthony Cowan was around, he might have been able to do some special things in the tournament. But the Mel Trimble moments, the buzzer beaters, like – Michigan State, some of the high level like Maryland plays that he has, it's just like he was Maryland basketball. He brought a lot of fans to Maryland basketball. He was awesome. One of the better recruits that we got. And he came in right away and it was like, this guy's awesome. Like this guy is really cool for Maryland basketball. There was a lot of question marks about when he would leave and if he left at the right time. Some people thought he should have left after his freshman year, sophomore year. But at the end of the day, he was just such a good player. So I'm cutting Anthony Cowan benching Jameer Young 
and starting mellow tremble. But that's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.